Who is the best right tackle in the 2024 NFL Draft? Is it Oregon State's Talese Fuaga or Alabama's J.C. Latham? We're going to talk about this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout and a senior draft analyst. And guys, thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. And you know I got to kick this introduction to my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at The Talent Code. Keep talking to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 National Champ with those LSU Bingo Tigers here to bring you championship-level contests around the draft 24-7, 365. We talk everything college football. We talk everything NFL football. But we like to say it all starts with the NFL draft. DP, we are talking this or that with the big boys. We're getting in the trenches, right? The battle of the right tackles, man. Alabama's J.C. Latham versus Oregon State's to least Fuaga. We are going to talk about this or that. Would you rather have that guy or that guy? Then we're getting into our classic segment talking stock up, right? Which guys are steadily rising up draft boards for us? And then, like we say, what goes up must come down, man. We have to talk about which guys are falling down the draft board. But listen, man, I know this is an action packed show. Go ahead, hit the like button. Go ahead and remember to comment after every segment. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. But DP, before we get started, man, why don't you hit them with our title sponsor? Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. This or that, Keith, and, and it's crazy because I know some people like we're we're missing some people. We're missing Tyler Guyton, Amarius Mans. We'll get into those guys in the next couple of weeks. All right, relax. But Talise Fuaga and, and J.C. Latham. J.C. Latham was kind of the, the the top right tackle for most of the college football season heading into draft season. And then we saw Talese Fuaga have a really good week down in Mobile, mm -hmm. right? To yep. where some of the questions about his game or, you know, whether it's footwork, different things like that, those we, we walked out of there not questioning those things anymore. So I was like, you know what? Who is the true top tackle right now? Because I think Fuaga is starting to climb even in the mock drafts. He was number six in mine. I've seen, uh, I think, another mock draft that had him as the first offense, the first right tackle off the board uh, as well. So when you look at these two guys, Keith, we know that they're both powerful, strong, nasty individuals on the front lines. But when you look at Fuaga versus Latham, let's get into Fuaga first, Keith. What stands out to you about Talese Fuaga's game? Yeah, I, I think you probably go more to the athletic ability, right? If you if you're comparing him to JC Latham, you feel like he might be a little bit more of a natural athlete, the movement skills, right? You're talking about teams that potentially run a lot of screens, right? Or you talk about even those teams, DP, that they love to pull those guard and tackles, right? Them from backside to front side. This is a prime candidate to be able to execute that properly. So when that when you look at Talisha, you, you respect the fact of how athletic he is, but then also he does arrive with the tenaciousness, right? Like this is a guy that wants to finish. This is a guy that has heavy hands that's going to punch, right? That that's that that can operate in pass pro and be able to um stalemate defenders, right? And you consistently talk about, I believe, the the matchup with him with Leitu Latu, right? And his ability to handle the speed, but then also to be able to anchor and sit down on Leitu and kind of handle that matchup. So that's what I look at from that. From JC Latham, I, I just bulldozer right like just your, your true prototype right tackle if you line up in front of him dp he's going to move you out the way right like you talk about kick him out the club we talk about dames dudes right this guy is going to kick him out the club for you dp he's going to help remove those guys that you don't want in your club so i look at it and, and i'm gonna jump into it dp you said this or that i have a question i want a proposition first mm -hmm. is this dp i'm gonna ask you this conversation or the the falling because it seems like jc latham is kind of falling right just yeah, even yeah. when we do our mock dress i'm not hearing a lot of top 10 buzz is jc latham kind of a product of that whole 
the name gets stale type of situation combined with the Evan Neal struggling in the NFL. Do you believe that that has something to play in it, play a part in it? Absolutely, right? That prospect fatigue, oh, it's a real thing, Keith. Yeah. I, because he was a top right tackle the whole entire time. And now that we're in draft season, it feels like people are tired of it. They're tired of seeing him as the first right tackle to the New it, York Giants. Yeah, somebody needs something new to tweet out, right? And you can't mm -hmm. just keep tweeting the same stuff. So it's like, you know what? Hey, Talise Fuaga is really good too. I just I, so I, I, I want to flip it on you, DP. Who, who are you picking? And then I'll, I'll kind of follow up. But I wanted, I did want to, you know, kind of the prospect fatigue thing because I think everybody's assuming that he's not good, right? Or they're taking that approach. Well, oh yeah, JC Latham has. I, I know this is still a very talented prospect. And if you ask me, DP, last year, right? Darnell Wright was. Was he the first, second tackle taken off the board, he right, in the top 10? The first, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think might have first. been the first. I would take J.C. Latham over Darnell Wright, like, at, you know, just comparing apples to apples, right? Both right tackles, both um strong guys, both run game guys. I would take J.C. Latham. So I, if you put it in that type of context, then I, I don't know why he would fall that far. Yeah, I, I think for me, Keith, you know, it, it's – I think it's combined with everything you said, and then you think about – the people are worried about the foot speed of him, right? But I, I, I remember watching when I was studying Jalen Harrell, the the um him and Braden McGregor, the edge rushers from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Jalen Harrell is a speed. He, we saw him down in Mobile. This, this guy's got a quick first step, explosive first step, sure. and that first that first kick slide from JC Latham to meet him at the apex or to to, to square him up was explosive. So you might question, okay, can he, does he have the fastest of feet? Maybe not. I think it's his footwork and foot quickness is good enough, but it's all about getting out the blocks. Can you get out the blocks and stop those, those type of guys from gearing up? And you know that you're not bull, you're not bull rushing JC, right? You're not getting through that frame. Like you're not about to power through and speed to power him as a more of a, you know, especially those kind of more explosive rushers. You're gonna have to be a physical, you're gonna have to be a Jared verse, right? Yeah, I, I don't yeah, see you have to lot to sticking that hand and th that long arm in there and walking JC Latham back. I feel yeah. you know what I'm saying. And because I, I watched him against Fawag and he, he didn't do that consistently. When I look at these two, I think the athleticism is what does separate them with Fuwaga, right? Because the, they're they're very similar in terms of again, nasty, powerful, strong. They're both better run blockers than they are pass protectors, mm -hmm. in my opinion, but they're I both agree. good pass protectors nonetheless. I'll take, and I think Fuaga came in, you know, just for those who know, like at the Senior Bowl, he measured at 6'5", 332, 30, 30, 33 and 3'8 on the arm, 81, 4, 8 on the wingspan. We won't have the full verified measurement of J.C. Latham, but he's, you know, I think um, on the website and everything, for this for Alabama, he's listed at 6'6, 335. He kind of looks it. So I would go with Fuaga slightly because of his athleticism, the lateral agility that he brings on top of yeah, he is I, I don't I think their physicality, they may be the two most physical tackles in this class. Like these are guys that, like you said, bouncers, they want to throw you out, right? They, they both can be the bouncers at, at Dame's dudes, the club, right? Yep. One on each side of the door. You're not getting in unless you got the stamp. And you're not fighting through those two guys. But I give the edge slightly to Fuaga um, as, as as in terms of this or that. But I love both of these guys, Keith. I think both of them will be high-end right tackles in the league if you let them play there. I don't think either one of them has to kick down the guard. I'm tired of that talk. Yeah, no, I and I don't I don't think so. I don't think so either. And I can they? Yeah, of course they could, right? But um, yeah, I I don't think either one of them have I'm gonna go with JC Latham. I'm gonna go the opposite side of this, and I'm gonna go because DP, I think we, we talk about a resume, right? And just playing in the SEC, and then also is what he's seen at practice, right? We talk about how Chris Braswell you know, had a series of unfortunate events, right, with Will Anderson and Dallas Turner. Well, this guy blocked those guys every yeah. single day at practice, right? And then you add in all the other, you know, edge rushers, B.J. Ajilari, what went top 50, top 60, right? Um, All the guys that he sees from Georgia, Nolan Smith, and, you know, just all of those players. Like, he, he's played against those guys. So I'm going to give J.C. Latham just a slight edge. But I do think this, D.P., I think we, in this conversation and transition on this thing is that, it should be a lot closer than what it is, right? As far as the rankings, um, and, and both of these guys are a lot are, are really talented. And like I said, both of these guys I would rank ahead of 
uh, Darnell Wright from last year who went with top 10 big to the Chicago Bears. But DP, let's go, man. We about to stamp it. We about to put our name on some things, man. We have coming up our classic stock up segment. So find out which prospects are constantly rising up our draft boards that we may be higher on than the rest of the draft community coming up next. This next segment is brought to us by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Guys, sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today, I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing later this week. I love that the fact that it's draft season, but I do hate and I am sad about the fact that there's no more actual football being played. The NFL concluded this past weekend with the Super Bowl. College football concluded a whole month ago. It is a little saddening that there is no more actual football that will be played anymore until the preseason and and regular season in August and September. So we have a couple months until we see actual NFL and college football yet again. Guys, therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team, and it's important to get things off our chest every once in a while. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. The stock market is back open, guys. And we're going to talk whose stock is right. Whose stock should you invest in? And Keith, for me, it was a guy that I, I liked. I felt he had developmental traits as a cornerback, but I wanted to see how he would handle the litany of talent at the Senior Bowl. DP, right? I hope you don't take my name. If you take my name, I'm going to be extremely disappointed. Go ahead. I, I hope you don't I, take I, my name. I went to Washington State. Okay, we good. We good. We good. We, we good. good. We good. <laughs> Y'all, Smith, Wade, man, this this young man, you know, measured in at five five ten, uh, one eighty seven, uh, sub thirties on the arm, right, uh, twenty nine six eight on the arm, but you know, he had the pick six in the actual game. I think to end the game, I think that was uh, I think he picked off Joe Milton, uh, to close that game out, took it back to the house, if I remember correctly. But he, he had a good week down in Mobile and showcased some stuff, right? I think he's a guy that you know with his limited size and arm length you don't want him a ton if you're gonna play him outside i liken him in kind of a cover four cover three even some cover two keys in terms of just playing him in zone and having him off the ball where he can trigger downhill he can make plays on the ball things of that nature i don't want him a ton in tight man to man against some of these bigger receivers in the nfl on the outside because those guys will want to dictate the action and, and, and get physical early, right? And I saw him struggle with something. Like, I think it was like a rep against Malik uh, Malachi Corley in mm-hmm. practice in one-on-ones where he was just – he was out physical, right? Outpowered, right? You know, and, and it's like, you know what? Let's have zone turn you. Let's have you play some cover three where you can read the action, tri- uh, trigger downhill, and you just saw it, right? I think the ball skills are there. He's got soft hands. When he, when he does catch the ball, you want to see him continue to – uh, make plays on the football, but I think his stock has gone up, and I think he's a guy that also some teams might look at and say, you know what, he gives us some inside-outside versatility, and those those smaller corners, right? We always talk about like we talk about with Tank Dell helping the smaller receiver, Jack Jones not being the biggest guy, but mm-hmm. being an absolute baller after whatever I, I can't remember what happened that caused him to be traded from New England, but going to the Raiders, man, and, and watching him play the way he played. For but, the Las Vegas Raiders, I think he's going to help some of these smaller corners, Keith. Yeah, but DP, he played like that for New England also, right? I, I think Facts, I can't Facts. remember 100%, but I think his issue was something off the field. Wasn't it? It, it might have been the situation at the airport where I think they had a oh, firearm or something yes, like that. Yeah. And I think it was the, the events after that, right? But yeah. I thought he was extremely talented. I thought he was extremely talented coming out as a draft prospect, right? Mm-hmm. Um, So I, I'm right there with you. And I like that just as far as setting a barometer, right, for those guys that can make plays and, and that are playmakers. Um, I, Is this... DP, I can't remember if we talked about Shaw Smith way um off the off of the podcast before. And I talked about um the corner that was from USC. Was it Makai Blackman last year that got yes, drafted yes. to the Minnesota Vikings? And I like him better. 
I like him better. When I watched him, he talking about the foot speed to be able to turn over, the vertical speed, um, to be able to sink his hips, right? The explosiveness, uh, playmaking ability. I have to post it to Twitter. Um, but th that interception that he had, I think it was against Roman Wilson at the senior bowl, was probably one of the best defensive back, probably one of the best plays, period, of the entire senior bowl, um, let alone the defensive backs, right? But DP, I was a little nervous, right? Because you started off with your stock up guy and you said you're picking a cornerback. And I said he better not pick my guy, right? I just hope it's not my guy. Uh, but it's not my guy, man. I am going to go with Rutgers cornerback, Max Melton. Yes, the younger brother of wide receiver Bo Melton. DP, this is where I met with Max, um, watching him in person, right? Because on film, you feel the competitiveness, right? Like, you're like, okay, I think this guy has competitive nature, but you can't help but see that it's Rutgers, right? And you're still kind of like, man, this is Rutgers football, right? But, man, I watched this guy in person at the Senior Bowl, and I love his competitive nature. This is, a, this is the type of player, DP, the way he plays football is how you turn around teams, right? Those teams that are picking at the top of the draft, right? So, obviously – the Panthers, the Cardinals, um, I'm thinking about some of the, you know, the Bears, right, if they want even more cornerback help. Uh, and, and not saying at the top of the first round, I'm not saying that, but, you know, you're gonna, talking about like the, to the top of the round and basically just saying bad franchises, right? If you're, you're a bad franchise, he's the type of competitive nature that you want in a prospect uh, because they play down in and down out. I don't, I don't fear that this guy's going to get a rookie contract and say, hey, I made it, right? And then kind of pack it all in and say, I'm done, man. And then that's just the competitive nature, right? Then you watch the film. This guy, he has, I think he has outside, inside versatility, right? I think he can play outside corner and line up with, you know, X, X, Y receivers or Yazis. Then he can kick inside and he can cover the slide. And I think he has the short area quickness, the foot speed, the fluid hips, uh, the explosiveness in and out of breaks, right? He, 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 he challenges us the catch point. So I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be a lot higher on Max Melton um, as a corner prospect. And, I, and I'm going to go ahead and predict this. I think that the NFL will probably follow suit. I, I can see this guy right after the combine um, blowing up and everybody saying like, hey, this Max Melton guy, we better pay attention to because he can potentially be a top 60, top 70 prospect. And let's throw this name out there too. DP is two names we have to throw out there, right? Because remember Washington uh, two years ago, right? They had two corners. They had Kyler Gordon, right, who went to the Chicago Bears. But then they also had Trent McDuffie, right? And everybody wondered, hey, how high are these guys going to go? Because they don't necessarily meet the, uh, you know, the arm length threshold and they're not tall enough, right? And guess what? At the cornerback position, ballers are just ballers, man, at the end of the day, right? Like, and in, in, in maybe they won't be able to be number one corners, right? But they're going to make positive players on the field because they're just naturally instinctive players. They're just flat out ballers. So I went with Max Melton as one of my guys uh, for stock up. And then- I like I like that, Keith. You know, and, and you know, as you were talking, I thought it back to last year and a guy that you put me on, Keetrell Clark. How how similar yeah. are those two in your opinion? I so I, I think this, and, and you know that I like Keetrell Clark, right? I was one of the, the people that had a second round grade on him. Now Legit. draft wise, I was wrong, right? But I stood on business and we'll let that thing play out just as far as whatever his career is, and he playing good football for the Cardinals, but I think this, I think Max might be more explosive, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about when it comes down to the playmaking ability and explosive and, and just being able to play ball, I like them both in that type of category, right? But I think I think Max might be a little bit more explosive. I like that, Keith. I like that. I, I had one more guy that I wanted to bring up, Keith, and that is Utah edge rusher Jonah Ellis, Keith. 6'2", 246, almost 250. This young man had 24 hurries, um, two QB hits. He had 13 sacks on the season, also 25 run stops as an outside linebacker. And just watching him, and when we talk about these edge rushers, I feel like this is a guy that does not get mentioned half near at all, Keith. Like, no, I he just, doesn't. I'm just thinking about it. Like his, his name is – this is a – not only is this a stock-up guy, right, but you, this is an off-the-radar guy. Like no, Nobody's talking about Jonah Ellis at this point. And it's crazy because of how productive he is. He's quick. He's got a good first step. He can bend. He, I think his hands are really active. He knows how to reduce surface uh, hitting uh, surface area, uh, hitting surface area for the offensive tackles. He knows how to clear that shoulder and close on the quarterback. He gets into the backfield consistently, consistently, man. And he, like you look over his career, you know, like I said last year. You know, he didn't play as many snaps, but he had four sacks. He had 21 hurries. He had two forced fumbles last year. This year, 24 hurries, 
13 sacks. So it's like, man, if you give the guy a chance, he's going to get in the backfield for you. So I want to give some field. love to Jonah Ellis because I don't like I don't know what's going on, but nobody's talking about him and they should be. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with DP. I almost said Spencer Rattler again, right? But I think we we've pounded the table enough for that. But I'm gonna wrap this thing up, man, with another edge rusher. It's crazy that we both went corner and both went edge rusher. I'm going with edge rush, edge rusher, and this is gonna take our guy a little bit. Um, Ryan Fowler, right? I don't think he's gonna disagree with me, but Adiza Isaac, man, Penn State edge rusher, Adiza Isaac. I seen enough to where I'm like. I see the intrigue in this guy, right? Like, I, there, yep. there, there's something there. Um, he's a little bit twitched up. I think he has some explosiveness to him. And when we think about those conversations of KJ Henry from last year, and then, oh man, why am I blanking on Zach Harrison? Zach Harrison out of Ohio State, right? Who went to the Falcons? I think he he has maybe a little bit more in 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 as far as the tools and the skill set and especially the explosiveness and then i go back to this man the guys that want it right because when you start drafting those mid-round guys those are the guys that can go either way right like you're not going to be if you're a franchise you're not heavily invested to where you're going to go year three and four and hoping that a, a guy develops and turns into something and then it's not a sixth seventh rounder to where you know if they don't make it you just cut them right so when you spend a third fourth round pick those guys have have to have a little bit something to them for them to be able to kind of turn the corner to be able to be like hey we drafted this guy as a mid-round grade and then he ended up being a starter for us right and i think adiza isaac can give some pretty good snaps now early on where do i think he falls i think he falls as a rotational pass rusher but i think his size and athleticism dp gives him the opportunity to play on first, second, and third down, right? Like I, I don't, you don't have to throw him in as just a, a DPR guy. And then the opposite side of that, right, is that he can be a, just a DPR guy if you want to, because there's a, I think there's enough there to be able to pull some stuff out. So if I put him in stock up, I, and also he could be a coach him up guy. Um, so yeah, DP, I went, I went with a Diza Isaac. I like that key because he had, a, he had a good week down in Mobile. He had a solid uh, week. Run a solid and rushing the passer. Yep. He had a solid week, especially, you know, we talk about the 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 players that are the other guys, right? Obviously, all of all of the focus is on Chop Robinson. But, yeah, these are Isaac, he showed well at the Senior Bowl, and you understood why he was invited, and he came there on a mission, and he he made his presence felt. But, DP, like I always say, man, what goes up must come down. And we had to talk about those players that are falling down the draft boards for us. So, coming up next, man, we're going to talk about the prospects that everybody else may be high on, and we're like, Hold on, wait a second. We need to figure this thing out. So coming up next, man, is the stock down segment. You shouldn't have to worry when it's time when it's time to buy tickets to your next big event. But if you wait to the last minute, you will because you're competing with other buyers. You're trying to find the best deals and avoid dealing with crazy scammers and scalpers. Let me introduce you to Game Time. They are the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. What else do they offer, DP? Tell us the benefits. Well, let me tell you guys, last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Their tickets are easy to find and buy. And this is my, this is my favorite part. They show the views from all the seats in the venue so before you purchase that ticket you know what vantage point you will actually have guys i'm telling you right now listen fellas if your significant other is like my wife and they love usher you can go and see usher right now you're going to be in october 23rd in charlotte at the spectrum center for as cheap as 125 dollars a ticket on the game time app so what do you need to do is simple download the game time app create an account and use the code locked on for 20 dollars off your first purchase download the game time app create an account and use the code locked on for 20 dollars off your first purchase thank you guys so much for making locked on NFL draft your first listen today and every day shout out for being out every day and like keith said what goes up must come down and stock down for me, Keith. It was a guy I liked on tape, but I definitely had some questions and I wanted to see where he measured in that. And that's Clemson defensive lineman Tyler Davis. I graded him off the tape. It's like a mid to upper third round guy. He's really disruptive, um, you know, good hand technique. He's got some quickness off the ball. He can uh, collapse the pocket, uh, you know, against on, on the quarterback and get into the face of the QB. But he didn't have the greatest of weeks down in Mobile, first off. But then secondly, he just kind of walked, like, looking at where he measured in at. I, the question, one of the biggest concerns I had was his arm length. I said, man, when he cannot dictate the action and get his hands and his punches off first, it's a struggle because guys with longer arms 
can absolutely kind of stifle him at times. Like he's got a really good motor, again, strong, uh, you know, top to bottom, like overall functional strength. But his arms measured in under 31 inches. He was at 30, 68 on the arm length. And like it shows because when you're do when you're like that, it's hard to you can't long arm a guy, right? right. It, you got to try and bull rush. You might be able to get a double hand swipe off, different things like that. But what does it do at, as a guy who's who has trained in boxing and stuff like that growing up? Keith, I know that I knew being shorter with the, the, the reach disadvantage, I gotta take some to give some. You know what I mean? It just is what it is. And I think that's my, my, my main thing is that he's gonna have to get as close to these offensive linemen to get his hands fitted. And it's like if they can latch. And grip, and if you're dealing with somebody like a Zach Martin or one, you know, Quentin Nelson, some of these strong physical guards where you can't overpower them, I like it's going to be a little bit of an uphill climb. And I, I actually end up dropping his grade closer towards the back end of the third, kind of early fourth. I could see him slipping to day the top of day three because of that, Keith. Okay, well, DP, I'm about to go with I think I, I probably have two explosive names. Um, I'm going to go with Texas defense lineman to Andre Sweat. That's why I love it. Yeah, and we have to talk about it, DP. We have to talk about it. Um, Listen, I love the upside, DP. I truly do, right? But And, and we're talking about in context of what? In context of where I'm drafting this guy. Um, I love the upside of what he can be. But watching the film, right, and we understand that the defense is going to be on the field, 70 snaps, right? and this is not a snap count conversation. This is a impact conversation, right? And I think that you, he makes two, three plays and then disappears for 40 plays, right? And that's the part where I'm trying to find the threshold of, okay, if I'm drafting this guy, right, and I have this guy as a draft prospect, it's when are you going to turn it on and turn it off, right? And then the other part is, DP, it, I need to find out more, right? Is that a competitive nature type situation right is that a matchup because you can't tell me some of these better guards in the, the nfl right that he'll go against some of these all pro guys are they going to make you tap out right in in the first round and you i mean in the first quarter and then you're like okay i'm tired this guy's really good i'm out of here right because that's why I, I need the the consistent flash and i need the consistent high motor and you you look at his teammate byron murphy you don't question it with Byron Murphy, right? You know that he's bringing it every single play, right? Like he, he's giving his all every single play. And I need that from my defensive tackle, especially if I'm drafting you with a top 32 pick, right? And then on top of that, if I'm drafting you to be the run stuffer. Now, you that because I, I can't have plays, DP, where now, you know, you you fast forward to next year, uh, you know, in two years, and then Brian Baldinger, you know, on his little camera phone is talking about this is a low effort play, right? I, I can't mm -hmm. I can't have that if I spent a top 32 pick on you. So I went with Tavondre Sweat, and, and in the sense of this, I'm probably taking him, instead of a top 32 pick, I will probably take him back in the second round-ish somewhere around there uh just feeling more comfortable because the draft capital i, I feel like because if you draft him you're going to need another defensive tackle also and not just some i'm not saying somebody to play next to him, i'm talking about somebody to rotate with him uh because of the, the snap count the snap share so there's a lot of stuff that i feel that i need to finish figuring out with tavondre sweat and we'll get that information come combine and everything else and, and keith it's it's crazy because Wow, that shocked me when you because I was like, I didn't expect that name. I can't, I've, I've said this, I don't know if I tweeted it. I feel like he is going to have to beat the Jordan Davis comparison. Yes, he, he is going to have to beat the Jordan Davis, yeah. And I think we talked about that, right? Like, just having, yeah, to we beat might the Jordan have, yeah. Davis because and, and we know how this goes, right? Because I, I can't even remember years ago, right? Where it was like, remember, it was the safety conversation to where it was like. La, it was like LaRon Landry and Eric Reed, and it was like all these big box safeties, right? And then nobody wanted them. And then um, who, who got drafted? Landon Collins got drafted, right? And then Landon Collins played, but he went in the back, and I think he went in the second round, the top of the second, but it was because people were comparing him to like the Eric Reeds and like, oh, can he cover? And then remember, so Landon Collins got drafted in the second round, right? But then Landon Collins played well, so he had to defeat that, right? And then Jamal Adams comes right up. And then Jamal Adams, who was virtually the same exact player, went top five, right? So it's it, it, and we, we can't act like it's not there, right? It's definitely right. there. 
and you know just with that conversation but i'm, I'm right there with she's gonna have to defeat the jordan davis conversation and i how do you feel about it listen i agree with everything you said like it, it is some those are concerns and, and you know you're talking about because it's i think it was like that day one of practice where like the limmer the 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 center from arkansas Bo they said he had yeah, a good Bo day limmer. against he's him, a right? good player you know, yeah, he's a good player. And when you look at the size difference, it's like he right. shouldn't be able to block you. But they said he had a good day, he had good reps to get him. And then this day two is when he had that infamous accordion situation where he just like literally put it. I thought he, I literally thought he was about to tear this dude's quads because of how forceful he put him on his back and his legs got trapped. And it was like, was that some frustration from a, you feeling like you shouldn't be able to block me. No, these, these undersized the offensive linemen shouldn't have a shot blocking you. You should yeah. be that dominant of a force. I want to see you be Vince Wilfork. That's what and I want yeah, to see you be. Yeah, and the, and the frustrating thing, DP, is that we see it, right? Is yes. that you see it in flashes, flashes, but the flashes are once a game, right? And, and it's like, if you can do it once, you should be able to do it 10 times, right? Because what you're doing is not almost situation based right it's not like we talk about receiver being independent right that that i mean dependent like being a defensive tackle is a, a independent position right you got you and you got the guy lined up against you across mm -hmm. from you right and you just beat him every single time and that's just your that's your job right and so that that's that's what i want to see from devondre sweat and i'm hoping that you know as we get closer to the combine the team interviews and things like that and obviously we're tapping with everybody to get more of why was it the, the ups and downs, right? And then maybe if there's something that comes out, I'll move them back up, right? Maybe it was a Texas defensive line heavy rotation, but I'm also got it. Why would you take your better players off the field? But DP, real quick, the other guy that stocked down for me, um, man, I'm, I was torn between two guys. I'm going to save one guy. Um, I'm going to go Patrick Paul. Um, and I know he's another. I'm I'm unleashing some names right now, huh, DP? I'm in my bag right now. I'm unleashing you, some you names. You definitely are. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, just and and this is in context of where people are saying, right? Top of the first, top of the second. I don't think I could go there, DP. And I understand the six six. I understand the three hundred pounds. I understand the arm length. But you know, I always say, DP, this is still a strong man game, right? And I still believe pass rushers, those guys that can convert speed to power, they're going to give him problems. And I, I always love body profiling guys when I get to things like the senior bowl. If we see them in close at the combine, of you know, or we in person at events and stuff like that, so that way I can see how much weight can you put on you, right? And it just it does he doesn't look like a, a broad shouldered right um big arms right thick lowers that just doesn't appear to be what he is so then my question is how much weight can we get right and then now we're talking about anchoring against the miles garris the jadavian clownies the tj watts right so my like will he have a chance right like that that's my question with him so i i'm i'm kind of more towards and this is far off from a lot of people, right? But that's why we do this segment. I'm I'm closer towards the fourth round, like the fourth fourth round, and potentially develop him into something. But there's nothing at Houston that for me, like watching the film, that will warrant a first round grade. And then when I seen him at the senior boy, it wasn't necessarily great reps neither. I think he's a developmental guy that you hope could be a starter because he has all of the physical tools and traits. No, I mean he's like you said, height, arm length, three hundred pounds explosive athlete you know watching yep. up and up close in person and i think that there's there's a lot of room to add to his frame like you're talking about to add that power and strength and he's just got to get better also technically with his hands right like making sure that i was talking about being defensive right like you can't you can't go into a boxing match and your hands down by your waist you got to have your hands ready to shoot and punch and counter and and, and block and, and protect yourself and I feel like he gives up his chest way too much, and he's more of a hugger as a block. And it's like, man, if you can get him with the right offensive line coach, right? You think about the Tennessee Titans with Bill Callahan and stuff like that, where if you get him third, fourth round, hey, we're going to draft and stash you. We're going to sit you for a year, get you working with this offensive line coach. We got some veterans in front of you. Not that the Titans got veterans that you can rely on, but like, you know what I mean? But if you have veterans, yeah, that's a, you get a Bill Callahan. That's situation in Tennessee. That is definitely. No, yeah, that, that's the situation. You got to get drafted and play, baby. You're going to have to sink or swim. But like, if you have a, a coach like a Bill Callahan, or you think about those Patriots teams with Dante Scarnecchia, where you say, you know what, man? We have the offensive line coach that's going to get you right. 
And if you have that and you have a veteran in front of them that you can play, I'm gonna tell you a team to watch out for me. If I and this is this is a team that I think should look at them, the Philadelphia Eagles, day two behind Lane Johnson, where you can let him and they got one. Uh, I think Stoutland is their offensive line coach, one of the best offensive line coach in the game. That's a situation where you feel really good about Patrick Paul because he get they took a rugby guy who never played organized football and he became their left tackle that they drafted. I think day three, couple good couple years ago, man. Um, so they know how to develop offensive linemen. So Keith, I like that name because even though he has everything, there's still a lot that he has to get done to be to meet the physical ceiling that he has. Yup, when a DP, you know what we're doing, man. We are wrapping up this show, man. So there we have it. That is another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast with your favorite dynamic duo covering everything NFL Draft, your favorite source to go to, man. So listen, if you haven't hit the like button, go ahead hit the like button. If you haven't commented, drop a comment. Whether you agreed or disagree, we like talking to you guys, man. And then listen, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the best NFL draft content there is out there and tell a friend to tell a friend with listen I am Keith Sanchez you can find me on x at the talent code that right there my co-host man a guy I go back and forth with man that is Damian Parson you can find him on x at dp underscore nfl and like we like to say man y'all talk to us because we like to talk back go subscribe and follow for free on youtube wherever you listen to podcasts get the latest episode as soon as it is available thank you for making locked on nfl draft your first listen today and every day shot for being our every day is guys on tomorrow's show we have prospect spotlight who's going underneath the spotlight unless you star wide receiver malik neighbor some say he's wide receiver one we're going to talk and about i have it something to say about it i have okay, something to we say go. about we're going to talk about that tomorrow guys we talk about that and what teams he fits with and coach him up on tomorrow's show. So like always, come and join the conversation again tomorrow on Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.